today on Fixing the Money Thing. We need to change our mindset of how we walk in this kingdom. If you don't know the correct definition, you can't be aware of what it really looks like. And if you're not aware of what it looks like, it's going to get you. Your success can actually breed success in others. It becomes an example for other people to succeed. Highlights from the financial team of experts at this year's Pro Vision Conference 2012. With most families burdened in unsustainable levels of personal debt, most Americans believe there is no way to have financial freedom. However, author, pastor, and financial expert Gary Cassie believes most families can be completely out of debt in less than seven years. You must get out of debt. You've got to make right choices with your money right now. Gary and his wife Drenda are now on a crusade to share this information that changed their life so that you can not just survive, but prosper in today's economy. Your life can be totally transformed by an idea in the marketplace. This is Gary Cassie, Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. We're Gary and Drinda Cassie, and we love to help people fix their money thing. Yes, we just recently completed the Provision 2012 conference. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was. Excellent conference. Good news. Yes, it was good, good news. news. Here's a lady named Rita, Gary. Um, she's out of California. She says, I saw your story, and it's exactly what I'm experiencing right now, mm. facing eviction, a raggedy car that I still have a note on, and I don't know what to do, Gary. My mom just passed away last year, not knowing the kingdom principles and just waiting for God to drop it from heaven, mm -hmm. and it never happened. Yes. I don't want the same thing to happen to me. I'm in a desperate situation and pray every day to remove mm -hmm. the spirit of worry but it greatly goes after me. Yes, Please yes. help me with kingdom principles. Your friend Rita, um, Rita, we have good news for you today. Yes. Rita, you need some good news. And Jesus came anointed to preach good news to the poor. And I'm here to tell you that there are answers in the kingdom of God. I, yes. I don't know what you've been taught, what you think, but nevertheless, we have walked it out and we have seen it happen. And in this year's Provision Conference, we're gonna take you to right now in just a second, we talk about these things. So let's just go there right now and let's begin to dive into some of these principles at this year's Provision 2012 Conference. I wanna mention, uh, you may have heard this, I was in Australia a couple weeks back and you know, the Bible says to go preach the good news of the, of the gospel, right? To go preach the good news of the kingdom. And so I ask you this today, what is the good news of the kingdom? And you would have to admit that most of the time people think it is scriptures or religious uh, communication. Like if I said, hey, why don't you go witness for Christ? Uh, they're going to think I need to go tell someone the Roman road or uh, John 3.16. Is that right? We have this mindset that uh, witnessing for Christ or sharing Christ is kind of a religious duty that we do. I mean, you, know, is it, you follow me? And uh, I, I'm here because the world doesn't want religion. They're not interested in, in, they're not even interested in this building being here. They're not, they're interested in their own lives. And uh, we, we need to change our mindset uh, of how we walk in this kingdom. But uh, as in Australia, and we, we were teaching along the kingdom, about the kingdom, and uh, the driver they assigned to drive us to the meeting's name was Matt. And so after the meetings were over, he asked if I'd like to go crab fishing, and I'd never been crab fishing, so I said, sure. Now, when you say fishing, it's not really fishing. It's really, you put pots out. So we had uh, two boats, and we were going out to crab fish, and we had dinner planned that night, and we were going to have crab, some crab. And so I said, well, how many people are going to be there? And he said, you know, maybe 10, 12 people or so. And I said, okay, so we need about 15, 20 crabs, I figured. So we're throwing the pots out, and I'm blessing them in the name of Jesus, you know, and uh, my wife's in the, these two little boats putting these pots out. Drenda's in the other boat putting pots out with his, the other people and uh, Kirsten, our daughter. And so at the end of the day, we had 18 crab. Now, that didn't mean anything to me, but driving back from the, uh, the dock back to his home where they were cooking supper, he calls his father who was preparing supper, who was wanting to know how much chicken and steak he needed to buy to have uh, the supper. And so he had one of those Bluetooth connections in your car where you hands-free, you're talking, and the voice comes through the radio. So you hear the other person in the car's radio. You all understand what I'm talking about. So he calls his dad, and his dad says, uh, hey, hey, Matt, uh, did you get any crab? And uh, Matt said, we have 18. 
And his dad said, what? He goes, oh my goodness, praise God. How do, oh my goodness, is God good. God is so, oh, you got 18, oh my God. He just went on and on. I'm thinking, what is the deal with 18 crab? And I'm sitting there, you know, scratching my head. And finally, this guy went on for like a minute and a half. And uh, so I said, Matt, what is the 18 crab? I mean, it's, what's the deal? He says, I've, I, I fish every single week for crab. He says, I grew up here. This is where I grew up. I fish every week for crab. And he says, the most I've ever caught is three. <laughs> he said, when I heard you teach all weekend about the kingdom, he said, I thought, do I dare venture? And I, I know, I know. He says, I'm going to stretch and believe for six by kingdom law like Gary teaches. <laughs> and we had 18. He said, I've never heard of that before. I got an email from him yesterday, and uh, he went out and caught a ton more crab. And this lady down there says, how are you catching these crab? And he goes, I've got a method that works every single time now. <laughs> it never fails. It's the kingdom of God. And uh, many of you have heard this story, but in uh, Montana, people love to see the kingdom operate. Don't they? They love to see the kingdom. It's fascinating to watch the kingdom operate. And so these guys had this idea. They didn't tell me about it till later, but they invited me to teach in Montana. And then they said, uh, okay, we're, we're teaching on Saturday. Uh, would you want to go antelope hunting on Monday? We want to see the faith hunt in operation. Now, if you don't know, I have a book called Faith Hunt where God taught me about hunting by faith or how faith operates. They said, well, let's, let's go hunt on Monday. We want to watch the faith hunt work. Now, you can imagine, Tim was with me on that trip. He turns to me and says, Dad, aren't you kind of nervous about that? You know, you don't know anything about antelope. I mean, they're the second fastest animal in the world, you know. Only a cheetah is faster, and you don't know anything about them. I said, Tim, I said, I, I received that antelope by faith in the name of Jesus. And so we went out there, and uh, in about 40 minutes, like usual, crawl over a hill, and there's the antelope. And uh, so I, I, I'm not used to shooting long range here in Ohio because, you know, we have flat ground, but... So I'm shooting at almost 300 yards, this rifle, and I empty the gun at these antelope. But now the antelope take off. They're in herd. They're herd animals. So they take off full speed. They run 60 miles an hour. Except I had sowed my seed for a buck because my tag was for a buck. So the whole herd takes off except one. The buck stands still. I mean, the whole herd is gone except this buck standing there. Okay, hold on. Yes, you know, just stand still. That's it. Keep running. I'm out of ammunition. True story. I'm out of ammunition. I say, give me a gun. Tim's there. Give me your gun. I grabbed Tim's gun. And finally, I, I, I finally hit the thing and, and I got the antelope. Now, when I got the antelope, all these guys were behind, these guys that went out to watch were behind me, you know, so they couldn't see, they didn't want to scare them. So, but they, I said, I got it, you know, and so they all run up and the cell phones all go. And then you could hear them all talking. They're going, it's just like the faith hunt book. It was amazing. The, the, the deer, I mean, the buck, the animal, it just stood still, just like the faith hunt stories. We saw it happen. Then they called me last year and says, we've got to have you back up here. We're going to take you elk hunting this time. <laughs> so I, I didn't go last year, but maybe this year. So I have a question for you. Matt when that thing with crabs happened, all those crabs, do you know what Matt's talking about to all of his friends? He's probably not quoting scripture. What's he talking about? He's probably talking about crabs. You know what those guys are talking about in Montana? They probably weren't quoting scriptures. They're probably talking about the antelope. Do you know what the good news of the kingdom is? It's the effect of the kingdom. It's the good news, the results of the kingdom. In fact, when John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus in Luke chapter 7, verse 18, to find out if Jesus was the one that was to come, uh, Jesus replied, he said, go back and report to John, verse 22, that what you've seen, what you've heard, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Now, it's amazing that Jesus was a scholar, I'd have to think, in the area of Scripture. Don't you think he, he would know the Scriptures? I mean, he, he knows them. Isn't it interesting he did not give a scriptural or a doctrinal dialogue to them and say, go tell John that according to Isaiah or according to, you know, Jeremiah this or Isaiah that, da-da-da, I fulfilled all the prophecies, and here's why you know I'm the one, because I'm from Bethlehem, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He didn't even mention one of those things. What did he talk about? 
the results of the kingdom, the stories of the kingdom, the people's lives that were changed. You know, I found people like to hear about good stuff. And if we would engage in telling people the good news of the kingdom, we would have a lot of people that would like to hear about it. The problem is, I don't know where you come from, but a lot of Christians I know don't have much good news. So sorry to say that. I mean, a lot of Christians don't have good news. They have religion, but they don't have, re- they don't have good news. You know, if they, I always figure if they're, not have fun, if they're not having fun doing it, why would I want to join them? And a lot of Christians are not having fun because they do not understand the kingdom of God. And so I'm in this thing for the fun of it. I don't know about you. <laughs> I want to I enjoy life. I want to enjoy this thing. I didn't really, I'm not into religion, you know. But So why don't people go and tell people about the kingdom? Why, why are Christians not sharing the gospels? Because when you say share the gospel, they mean John 3, 16. Or, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'd say to someone. I don't know the scriptures. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a pastor. That's right. But tell them the good news of the kingdom. Tell them the impact it's had in your life. Tell them your stories. Once again, Gary and Drenda Cassie. It's better to get the great catch and that was fun, you know, being able yes. to demonstrate the kingdom. It works every That's, single time. We've seen God do this over and over again. That's what makes it fun is the kingdom does exactly what it's supposed to do. You know, I'm not in this thing for religion or, or just to play church. I'm in this thing because it impacted our lives, got us out of debt. And that's why we do what we do is to help people understand this is for real. Yes, when you demonstrate the the kingdom, it draws people to God. Exactly right. And that's what our lives should look like. And it should. So let's go back and find out some more. Let's go right back to the conference and dig into the kingdom principles even further. Let's return to Faith Life Church and more from this year's Provision Conference on Fixing the Money Thing. God loves you very much. And he is very concerned about you. And he's glad you're here. And he plans to give you something. Not just something, but a lot of things. But as Pastor Gary said, he wants you to see yourself as a dispenser, as a disperser, as a spreader, as a giver, as an influencer, as a world changer. Starting with that he loves you very much. There's a very common thing in music. It's called a tuning fork. The thing of a tuning fork, a tuning fork starts in one piece, and if you picture God's hand, but it separates into two parts. And apart from two parts, see if I get this to work. Hear it? Apart from two parts, it won't work. And I'm going to give you something today for your destiny and for your purpose. You need to to separate your identity and your destiny. Because if you don't separate your identity from your destiny, you will be a slave instead of a son or a daughter. Okay? So... What that's saying is this, if what, is call, if what God has called you to do is what is making you feel good about yourself, it's producing your self-esteem, it's going to take all the fun out of it. It's going to put you under immense pressure, and it's actually going to limit you, okay? So... My identity as a son and a daughter of God is separate from my destiny of what I'm called to do. And then we're going to get into the seven secrets of godly success. We're going to get into all of those things. But if we don't understand this, the ride's not going to be so much fun. More from this year's conference in a moment. I want to take a moment and encourage you to get the Provision Conference 2012. This is our third annual Provision Conference, and by far this was the most powerful one we've ever conducted with Dave Anderson with us, myself, 
uh, teaching, plus we had many other workshops and different speakers that came through the conference. But this CD set, I, I believe, is the most powerful provision conference we've done. And it'll, it'll take you through the steps, the understanding of how God wants to prosper you and the steps you're responsible for. You know, God can't do it without you. And this material is vital for your future. Also, the provision journal is included for you to write the ideas God gives you for your prosperity. Money is created, not found. You need to write those ideas down and pursue them. So get the material today. Today's resources from Fixing the Money Thing come from the recent Pro Vision Conference. For just $35, five CDs or five DVDs designed to change your vision, train you to recognize opportunities, and get you dreaming again. We're called to have overflow. The overflow never happens until your heart overflows for God. Never. Your heart, you got to sell out to God. Gary Cassie, helping people fix their money thing for over 27 years. Dave Anderson, author, international business sales and leadership trainer and consultant. Rick Suarez, finance and marketing expert, along with other successful businessmen and women, share inspired information to help you fulfill your God-given potential. Call 888-391-LIFE, write, or go to GaryCassie.com to order. And whether you choose CDs or DVDs, we'll include the ProVision Journal, a place to record your thoughts, ideas, and life-altering revelations as you see God's creative power for your life. For most people, the reason they want to prosper is they're tired of running under the earth curse system. Provision 2012, five CDs, five DVDs, and the Provision Journal for $35 today in support of Faith Life Ministries. Write, call, or visit GaryCassie.com and start restoring provision in your business and your life. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and he wants to give you financial strategies you must have now. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. Write Faith Life Now or go to GaryCassie.com to get provision 2012 today. This year at our 2012 Provision Conference, I was privileged to have Dave Anderson as our keynote speaker. And let me tell you, if you've never heard of Dave Anderson, he is amazing. In fact, the first time I heard Dave speak, I ordered all of his material while he was speaking online on my cell phone. I tell you, you've got to get this information. Dave is an amazing speaker that travels and helps businesses understand key principles of prosperity, how to run a business, and the principles of how to lead a business. Unbelievable guy, you've got to check him out. So I'm gonna give you an introduction right now. Let's go to Dave and you meet him for yourself right now. Let's return to Faith Life Church and more from this year's Provision Conference on Fixing the Money Thing. I really believe our biggest vulnerability is the ones we're unaware of. And one big difference I have found with successful people in any endeavor is awareness. They're, they're more aware of what has made them successful. It's been said there's nothing more dangerous than being successful without being resolutely clear as to why you're successful. Because if you're not clear as to why you were successful, you can get away from those things, those principles, those disciplines. And there are six things, basic things, simple things, common things that are always crouching at the doorstep trying to bring us down, trying to break our momentum. And you may say to yourself, well, I'm not even as successful as I'd like to be yet. So do these six things apply to me? They apply to everyone who is on a journey, everyone who no longer wants to stay where they're at, anyone and everyone who wants to go from here to there and beyond. And so I believe that applies to everybody in this room today. You know, it's interesting that um, people don't understand if I, if I had just a few minutes to spend with you and I had to give you the one thing that lies at the, at the root of these six temptations to let up, to slide back, it would be complacency. I would share that word with you, complacency. Now, the, the thing about complacency is most people don't think it applies to them. Uh, whenever they think of complacency, they always think of somebody else. Uh, I've never seen someone come up and say, how are you today? Well, I'm complacent. How are you? Well, I'm bored. I mean, <laughs> we don't have those conversations. But, and I believe one of the reasons that we don't believe complacency applies to us or can apply to us is we misdefine it. If you don't know the correct definition, you can't be aware of what it really looks like. And if you're not aware of what it looks like, it's going to get you. See, complacency is subtle. It's sneaky. 
gets you a little bit at a time, doesn't overwhelm you in one fell swoop, but it, it, it crouches at the doorstep looking for openings. And I think this is this, this way in all aspects of our life, in our spiritual life, in our financial life, in our relationships. Complacency can infect and affect all of these areas. Now, if you look up the word complacent in the dictionary, I'll, I'll save you the trouble. Here's what it says. The definition, I think, will open a lot of eyes. It certainly did mine. If you look it up, it says calmly content, smugly self-satisfied. Isn't that an interesting definition? Calmly content, smugly self-satisfied. See, a lot of people think it means you're lazy. That's not what it says. It's not, it's not what it says. It, it means you've gotten calmly content and smugly self-satisfied. So let me ask you a question. Is it possible as a leader in your business, as a leader in your ministry, that you can work 60, 70 hours a week, and that is certainly not lazy, but become so calmly content with your results, you're not holding people accountable anymore. Can that happen? Now I actually have some tools that I can actually apply to my finances. Getting over your past, moving on, and you can do all things in cross. The way that God wants to partner with us, I just never thought about it like that. And I feel like I just got empowered with truth. It's really given me a lot of confidence to go back down and really pursue it, to really get this thing started. Also at ProVision 2012, Drenda Cassie. Do you know most of your success has to do with the way you perceive and think about you and about success and about what God has for you? There are a lot of people who feel guilty about success. How many of you would admit that sometimes you feel a little bit guilty to think about being successful? Anybody? Yeah, a lot. Look around. That's because we've been made to feel like if we are successful, someone else is going to do without something. Somebody else is going to be unsuccessful at our, at our expense. You know, we've, we've put out our desires. We've made a lot of money. We've been successful. And now we've robbed somebody else. Is that not the attitude that we hear is that not the, what, the, the attitude we're hearing more and more even in the news? Is that, you know, if I have money or I have success or I have a nice car, a nice house, then that means I've ripped someone else off and kept them from having success. And Gary, my husband, teaches very well that wealth is created in the marketplace. It's not like there's only so much of it, and that's all there is. And once we tap it out, there can be no more success. Everybody else is just going to have to, you know, starve and, and barely make it and, and be in a, a soup kitchen line. And that's wrong. It's not true. Your success can actually breed success in others. It becomes an example for other people to succeed. You need to succeed. See, your success should inspire. If someone's jealous of your success, the problem is not in you, it's in them. And you know what? Eventually, they'll either get over it or they'll live under it the rest of their life. Today's resources from Fixing the Money Thing come from the recent ProVision Conference. For just $35, five CDs or five DVDs designed to change your vision, train you to recognize opportunities, and get you dreaming again. We're called to have overflow. The overflow never happens until your heart overflows for God. Never. Your heart, you got to sell out to God. Gary Cassie, helping people fix their money thing for over 27 years. Dave Anderson, author, international business sales and leadership trainer and consultant. Rick Suarez, finance and marketing expert, along with other successful businessmen and women, share inspired information to help you fulfill your God-given potential. Call 888-391-LIFE, write, or go to GaryCassie.com to order. And whether you choose CDs or DVDs, we'll include the ProVision Journal, a place to record your thoughts, ideas, and life-altering revelations as you seek God's creative power for your life. For most people, the reason they want to prosper is they're tired of running under the earth curse system. ProVision 2012, five CDs, five DVDs, and the ProVision Journal for $35 today in support of Faith Life Ministries. Write, call, or visit GaryCassie.com and start restoring provision in your business and your life. Gary Cassie is America's financial coach, and he wants to give you financial strategies you must have now. Call 888-391-LIFE. That's 888-391-5433. 
Write Faith Life Now or go to GaryCasey.com to get Provision 2012 today. Once again, Gary and Drenda Casey. You know, Gary, prospering is throughout the Bible. A lot of people have problems yeah, with yeah. that. I love how you shared yeah. what the purpose of prosperity yes. is. There is a purpose in it, isn't there? Absolutely. It's about the kingdom. You know, it's about the kingdom. And it's exciting to be part of the kingdom because there's always profit and reward in the whole operating with God. We don't right. serve, we don't work for God. Right. We work with God. And Nor it's, do it's we fun. serve money. That's right. We don't serve money. God is a good father. He takes care good. of his children. He takes children. great care of us. And yes, we he know, does. you know, it, it's an example to people. Yes, He's he good. does. And so I want to challenge you. Knowledge is freedom. And I want to challenge you to invest in yourself today and to mm -hmm. get the material from this year's Provision 2012 conference that was here at the Now Center. This information will change your thinking, which is really the, the future you hold is how you think. But uh, it's awesome. Plus with our provision journal where you can write down the ideas God gives you because money's not, uh, you know, you don't find it laying on the ground. It's created with ideas. And so you'll want to make sure you journal the things God tells you because that's where the money's going to be found at. So go to our website, faithlifenow.com. Call the number on the bottom of your screen. Know this, we are partners. We are cheering you on. We want to see you win and we only do this program so that we can do that. And so we want to thank you for joining us again today on Fixing the Money Thing. We look forward to seeing you next time. Fixing the Money Thing is brought to you by the Ford Financial Group and Lindsay Honda and Acura of Columbus. When you need God's help, prayer is always the answer. Pastor Gary understands and wants to help. That's why he has caring friends standing by, ready to pray with you. No matter what you're facing, there is hope. Call and let's agree together. Caring prayer partners are available faithfully Monday through Friday from 9 to 6.30. You can also leave your prayer request at GaryCasey.com. Just click and know someone will be agreeing with you in prayer for your need to be met. Call or log on today. It's time to build an army, and we're calling all women for this free event, featuring a powerful lineup of speakers to encourage and equip you for the battle. Hosted by Drenda Kissy and Faith Life Church. Call all your friends and mark your calendar for this main event, October 18, 19, and 20. With morning, afternoon, and evening workshops, there's something for women of all ages. It's time to go fight, win. Join Pastor Gary Cassie in your area and experience firsthand how following kingdom principles can help you achieve your destiny. Only by understanding God's plan for your life can you reach your full potential from finances to family, even your future. Understanding your calling can lead you to victory in all areas of your life. Come experience Gary Cassie for yourself. October 10th, 11th, and 12th at the Orlando House of Prayer. Three evenings of teaching sure to help you Fix Your Money Thing. Tune in each Friday at 5.30 p.m. for Drenda. Connect with special guests, discover life-changing topics, and learn to live life out loud. It's more than just television. It's Drenda. Come experience Faith Life Church for yourself and become part of a close-knit gathering of people who want something more. Located on the east side of Columbus, just 10 minutes from Easton off of 161. Come home and experience new life at Faith Life Church.